Hi everybody, welcome to Saturday Live at the Backyard Bird Center. Today we have a request from the internet, and that is uh, we talk a lot about uh, attracting cardinals and chickadees and goldfinches and you know the common feeder birds. And someone said, well, could you do a program on uh, attracting the other birds? You know, the, the, the field guide's full of all these beautiful birds that it says are in our area. What can we do to attract those to our yards? And so I thought it was a great topic, and we're going to start with that. Now, if you've heard me talk, many times or even a few times usually in the when i'm talking about birds at some point in the conversation i will refer to food water and shelter the three basic needs that you that all living creatures need and if you want to attract birds and wildlife to your backyard those three things are what to consider so we've talked about that a lot with with the you know our common feeder birds we talk about our seed choices and unfrozen water uh, and nest boxes and things like that. Well, when you're thinking about these non-typical birds, as we say, and most of these non-typical birds are the ones that migrate, which means they're probably insect-eating birds. And that's true. It, you know, the neotropic migrants that, that nest here, that leave for the winter, are uh, dependent upon insects and fruit. And they have to go to a different part of the world where the climate is different and with Central and South America and even Southern Mexico where a lot of these birds overwinter. But they're coming back in now. They're moving north. Uh, I always say the birds in Costa Rica don't know what the weather is in Kansas City. So they're, they move by day length and that, that pattern movement is happening right now. So we're starting to, to head this way and we're starting to get prepared for that. So this summer tanager behind us is one of those birds, one of those birds that we can attract to our backyards. It's not a typical bird feeder bird, but we learned it several years ago that if we offer up a grape jelly and fruit like oranges, they will come and eat from those. So that's one of the birds that we'll be talking about today. But for the first part of the program, what I really want to talk about is shelter because landscaping in your yard is so critically important uh, when you want to attract a lot of different birds. Landscaping, is, it, to me, is kind of a two-phase thing. One of them is the, pro the providing of natural fruit. So if you plant a native plants that produce berries like the cedar waxwing likes to eat or these dogwood berries. Now, a lot of these fruiting bodies don't occur until the fall. So, so the, the benefits you'll gain from some of these are not going to be till later. But early on, uh, there are nectar producing flowers like this black locust tree that this black and white warbler is in. The Orioles absolutely love the nectar from the black locust blooms, which blooms right about the time they're getting here uh, in the first week of May or so is typically whenever those bloom. And so if you landscape with native plants, the plants that are adapted to our soils, adapted to our uh, it droughts it conditions, and, and, and they will survive and they'll produce a lot of food for these other birds that we we're talking about today. And that is a lot of those nectar eating birds, those fruit eating birds, and those insect eating birds. Now the part of landscaping is the insects. A lot of the attraction is when these, when these flowers open up, the insects immediately head for the nectar there, and birds are eating those insects that are in there. So attracting things like black and white warblers uh, that are just now coming in, you're not gonna, they're not going to come and eat your, to your feeder and eat anything like suet or anything like that. They are going to eat the nectar from these plants and the insects that are attracted to these plants. And so and native landscaping is critically important. If you want to see other birds in your yard, that is a very, very uh, important thing. The other part of landscaping, don't use chemicals. The, it, the, it takes a, lots of insects. If you watched last week's program about uh, house friends, and we talked about 500 trips a day with the uh, feeding hungry mouths, uh, and, and each time an insect was brought back. If you're spraying your landscaping with uh, grub control or, 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 or putting down 
kernels to kill the grubs and to kill the insects in your flower beds, you're taking food out of these birds' mouths. They have to have that food. So your chances of attracting a lot of these birds to your yard goes way down if you're using uh, insecticides in your yard, not to mention the, you know, it, it, what it's doing in the soil and the water. So uh, you know, native, native plants are adapted to our insects and they're adapted to our soils and then you really don't need to use those controls. Natural controls like these, these birds that are eating all these bugs will, will work great for you. Now if there is an outbreak of some exotic insect like Japanese beetles, things like that, uh, we encourage traps over poison. So uh, you, landscaping is the number one way to attract some of these really beautiful birds. Things like the scarlet tanager, which is one of the most beautiful birds you're going to see. This bird will also come to suet occasionally. It's not nearly as common, and even they've been seen on jelly, but usually not. Uh, so these, but these birds are migrating through, and, and, and insects a big part of that. Now, water. Water is easily the most important thing that you can offer for birds. It's, it, it, they, migrating birds, whenever they, they, they migrate at night and they drop out of the sky in the morning at sunrise, they don't know where they are. They don't know where food is, they don't know water is, and so having water available to them is so important. And moving water, water that like sprays in a mist or gurgles in a, um, a fountain, the, the, the bubbling of that water sounds when it makes, that, that's a magnet for, especially for migrating birds that don't know where water is, and it brings them in, and you can get great um, native birds to come into that, especially migrating birds that see some of roots. These, most of these water pictures are roots pictures. Uh, a white-throated sparrow here uh, taking a bath in her fountain. Um, one of my favorite pictures up here. Where did it go, Ruth? There it is. Oh, there he is, right there. This is taking a roof yard at her fountain. This is a common yellow throat, one of the warblers that it is coming to, to drink the water in migration. And also there's always insects around water too, so it's a good place for them to refuel on insects and things like that. So provide water. water moving water will be great for your birds, and you'll, you'll need them. And then food. Most of these birds, I said, are, are fruit-eating birds. So you can offer up, if you don't have in, in your landscaping in this time of year, you want to subsequent that, subsidize that. Things like grapes. A bunch of grapes on a feeder like that can attract lots of different birds. Cat birds, and this is a Tennessee warbler that was coming to the grapes. So we see uh, uh, Orioles eating those. So there, the fruit, apples. You know, you can cut apples in half and put them out. This is the red-bellied woodpecker eating on the apple. I've seen cardinals eat on the apples. So lots of different things. So, uh, but jelly is the most famous. You're putting out a source of grape jelly, uh, Baltimore Oriole and the Orchard Oriole. So jelly will attract lots of different birds, not just Orioles. And, you know, we, had, we saw the, the summer tanager eating on the orange there. Uh, we've got uh, the... Brown thrasher eating on the grape jelly. So to attract a lot of these other birds that you're uh, that, that are not typical seed eating birds, these are some of the things you can do and the things you can try. Uh, the the last of them that I'm going to mention, of course, is mealworms. Live mealworms and dried mealworms are are eaten by most of these birds because they're insect eating birds. So putting out, uh, mixing in dried mealworms into your seed, you can do that, or live mealworms by themselves is quite often the best. Um, you can uh, offer those up, and, and luckily, you know, most of these people do it for their bluebirds, but sometimes some of these migrating birds will discover it. I've had orioles take the mealworms really well at times. So those are some of the suggestions that uh, for attracting, quote, the other birds, the non-seed birds. So if you uh, like the program, it was a great idea, like this person, send them in and we'll uh, try to add them to the program list. It's the native plant sale. Oh, the native plant sale. Ruth is reminding me that yes, when I talked about the first, about our, our native, uh, native plants, search your area. We, have, we host a native plant sale twice a year, but there are usually lots of native plant sales around uh, areas at nature centers and things like that. So do a search if you want, trying to, want to put some uh, landscaping and convert your landscaping to native plants. Uh, in your area because it is really, really important. So thanks to the idea for the program. Give them a like, give them a share. Uh
subscribe if you would to the YouTube channel. That helps us. And thank you so much.